Listening is a skill, but many of us do it poorly. And if we can learn to do it better, it can produce dramatic improvements in our lives. In this video, I'm gonna teach you five stock phrases I use when I do reflective listening or active listening or looping back. It goes by a bunch of different names, but it's the same basic skill. Hi everybody, I'm Bruce Lambert from HowCommunicationWorks.com, a channel where I teach you communication skills so you can advance in your career, improve your relationships, and be more confident. Listening is one of the great unheralded skills in communication. Most of us think about communication as being about talking, you know, about how we say things, about being articulate, being creative, being thoughtful, being funny, being charismatic, and so on. But I find, especially the last 10 years of my life or so, that the most important skill is listening. But listening does involve actually talking in certain ways. So I wanna talk today about one particular listening skill called reflective listening or active listening or sometimes looping back. And it involves basically repeating what someone has just said in order to confirm that you've understood it, to show that you're paying attention, and to give people an opportunity to elaborate on their feelings. If you remember my previous video on empathic listening, which I'll, I'll link to, that video talked about how one way to help people feel comforted and feel better when they're emotionally upset is to give them an opportunity to elaborate on their feelings. And reflective listening gives people an opportunity to do that. It's just an incredibly powerful skill, and I strongly recommend you take some time to use it. I'm gonna give you these five phrases that I use when I do reflective listening, but first I wanna give you a caution. And the caution is that this is a kind of technique, and sometimes we think techniques are, are gimmicks, or just devices, or sort of mirror techniques, and that when we use them we're being insincere or inauthentic. And I think that's a real risk. If you use these things without an authentic desire to listen to people, and to, to care about them, and to be kind to them, and to show concern and empathy to them. If that authentic feeling isn't there inside of you, in terms of your own intention in the interaction, then I think these things can come across as gimmicks, as techniques, and people might all even call you on them and say, oh, don't use that BS psychobabble on me. But what I find much more common is when I enter an interaction authentically with the sincere intention to listen to somebody and to try to help and to try to understand what they're saying, then I can use these phrases and people don't even notice them. They certainly don't notice I'm using any technique. And I don't even notice I'm using a technique anymore because I've incorporated this so much into my own personal style. I do worry that some of my friends and family will watch this video and notice that I've been using these phrases with them and maybe they think, they'll think I've been being authentic, inauthentic, but that's not the case. This is just the way I communicate now. So let's go over these phrases, five phrases I use when I do reflective listening. Number one, you are X. So let's imagine the scenario we're talking about is a person who's, who's angry with us because we've showed up late for a date or a meeting or an appointment. And so they're angry with us and we, we start talking to them and they're really angry. And so I just say, you're angry. You're angry with me for showing up to this meeting late. You think that I'm being disrespectful to you by showing, this, showing up late to this appointment. But I just say, you are, and then I insert whatever I'm observing. Notice that these phrases aren't really the key to empathic listening. The key is focusing on what other people are saying, focusing on what other people are feeling, and then we fill in the blank in these phrases. These phrases are just a template to insert your observations. The much more fundamental skill is being observant, paying attention to people's nonverbal behavior in the context so that we know what they're feeling. But as we're trying to determine what they mean and what they're feeling, we can use these phrases to allow them to elaborate on their feelings. So someone starts to get angry with me, and one of the things I might say is, you're really angry with me. So you are, and then fill in the blank. That's number one. Number two, it sounds like, and then dot, 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 and you fill in the blank. So else I might say, it sounds like you're really upset with me for showing up to this meeting late. It sounds like you think I'm being disrespectful to you for uh, coming to our meeting late. So it sounds like, and then insert your observations. Number three, it seems like, it's very closely related to the other. I didn't promise you these would all be completely unique, but these are the phrases that I use and you can alternate them so they don't start to sound like a gimmick. So it seems like, so you observe their behavior and say, it seems like you're really frustrated with me for showing up to this meeting late. It seems like your perception is that I constantly come to these appointments late and that maybe this shows some disrespect for you or that I don't care. So I just say, it seems like, and then I insert my observation. Number four. 
What I'm hearing is, and then I insert my observation, what I'm hearing is a lot of anger at me for coming late to our date. What I'm hearing is frustration. What I'm hearing is sadness. So what I'm hearing is, and then insert the observation, and then be quiet and listen to the remainder of what people are saying. That's actually a key to listening as well. Number five in my stock phrases for doing reflective listening. You seem to be saying, so you seem to be saying that when I show up late to these dates, that it gets you really angry. Or you seem to be saying that if I'm not always on time, that it reflects disrespect to you and to our, our meetings. You seem to be saying that that my coming late reflects badly on, on me as a person or on my character. So you seem to be saying, and then insert the observation. So that's it. Those are five phrases that I frequently use when I'm trying to listen carefully to people and demonstrate to them that I'm listening to them. And when I'm trying to give them an opportunity to elaborate on how they're feeling so that I can understand their feelings, their intentions, their thoughts, their beliefs, and so that I can do a better job listening so that I can do a better job communicating. So that's it. These are, in my experience, incredibly powerful techniques. They must be used with an authentic intention or else they might come across as gimmicks. But if you, in all sincerity, with an authentic intention to be kind and helpful, use these phrases, I think you'll find they can transform your relationships and dramatically improve your skills as a listener. If you like this kind of video about communication skills, would you consider subscribing to our channel? And if you do, press the bell icon so that YouTube notifies you every time we put up a new video. Also, like this video if you enjoyed it and got something out of it. Share it on social media with your friends. And go on over to howcommunicationworks.com. Sign up for our email list and get a free ebook about empathy, which describes listening in more detail. Look at our one on one coaching offer if you think you might be able to benefit from one on one coaching from me about communication skills. And read all the other articles on our blog about communication skills. Thanks so much for watching. I do so appreciate the time you take to watch these videos. We'll see you next time.